Alongside me in the studio, the former Republic of Ireland striker Tony Cascarino and three-time Premier League winning captain Steve Bruce. Now, we have received a message from a listener this morning and I think that Steve will recognise the voice. I believe you've got Dad on the uh, on the radio with you tomorrow. My only real time of working with Dad was at Hull when it was obviously a really successful period. So it was uh, it was really enjoyable, not only for the players, but for the staff as well, because obviously we've got a couple of promotions and a couple of years in the Premier League, FA Cup final. I'm sure Dad might have a couple of stories about them times. And if he doesn't, ask him about the time when Abdullah Faye turned up late on a match day and he tried to keep him locked out the dressing room. <laughs> and Steve shaking his head here. It was one of the one of the daft decisions I ever made. I upset Big Abdullah Fade. Remember Big Abdullah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He came after me, and I thought, "Oh, I'm in serious, serious trouble." He was late as usual, and oh, what a great lad he was as well. But I told him to wait outside because the team talk had already started. So after I'd finished, then I let him into the dressing room, and he, oh dear me, he wasn't he wasn't best pleased to say the least. So uh, and it, this son of mine, he gets everywhere. What's he doing on the show anyway? He should be at work. Yeah. He should be at work and doing his stuff. What's it like as a dad having to manage your son? Well, it came by mistake, really. And um, Alex was going to go out to um, play in America. And um, Peter Chapman, who helped me run Hull at the time, we were out in a, in a, a training camp and Alex came to join us because he was going to keep fit and, um, and wanted to make sure he had a pre-season before he was going to go out to America. And um, America didn't take off for him. And uh, and Peter was watching a, a practice match and said, "Who's this? Who's this playing centre half against us?" And I said, oh, "That's my son, Alex." And and what's his situation now? You know, if we're looking for a young centre half and this, that, and the other. And, and lo and behold, went on to sign him because I always knew he could handle his own because he'd played for the likes mm. of Leeds and and uh, Ipswich for years. So I knew the championship for him was no problem, and he could play. Well, the the big thing was just dealing with son and nepotism mm. and all the rest oh, of it yeah. however his ability and his, 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 his own ability brought him through because uh, he went on to, to play well for us and a, a really good signing for them so, so judge and jury is his career yeah, his yeah. Career. That, yeah, that's, yeah of course. that's his judge and of jury course. he yeah, had yeah. a terrific career didn't he yeah he had a really really good career and uh, yeah and he's still trying now he's, he's in management had a little go at Macclesfield and now he's gone into Salford as assistant to Carl Robinson at there so um, he's, he's, he's wants to stay in the game he's passionate about it that's for sure um, so uh, let's hope he, you haven't scared him off have you no 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 he hasn't seen enough to be scared of I'm, I'm really really staggered by that but um, he loves the game like you do yeah, Cass, yeah, like yeah. I do and the next step up from playing is managing coaching he played in that um, I don't, don't really want to bring this memory up he played in that 2014 FA yeah. Cup final didn't he well, I said I don't want to bring it up but in actual fact you know people will were, were look at the score and you know no hole were 2-0 up in the final but I was looking back at that Arsenal side that was a hell of an Arsenal team wasn't oh it? great Arsenal team and you, and you only work on something during the week and they come off we had yeah. two corners we score score from the first one we're 1-0 up in the corner what works a treat what we've done on the training ground and we're 2-0 up and Unfortunately, we weren't 2 0 up for long because I think Cazola scored, scored after 16, 17 minutes. Yeah. And, um, and uh, unfortunately, it wasn't 2 0 for long, but it was 2 1 for a long, long time. And mm. a great, great, great times. And uh, unfortunately, we lost out in the end to two set pieces from Arsenal. For all the great players, yeah. we lost to two set pieces from them. Yeah, um, Jeff's mentioned obviously winning titles and you've won cups, Brucey, as a player. But you've also. You know, being a manager for such a long time, which went over to, over two decades, mm. you must be really proud of that. Yeah, I mean, look, yeah, I, I count myself fortunate rather than proud. I, I've 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 had a, a I've, I've, I've had a wonderful time, and football has given me a, a life which you know only many can dream of. Really, I'm, I've been really fortunate, and I've really really enjoyed it. I, I love the game more than anything, mm. really. Um, but when I think back to Hull and Wigan days and Birmingham days and and all the all the, the good times that they've had over the years, then yeah, I'm really, really happy with like, what we've done. Sounds like that drug's going to get you again. Well, <laughs> well, do you know something? You don't have to, surely. I, yeah, I, well, I, I want to be involved in something. I've just been talking to Jeff there when we're off there. There, it's, it's finding something to do, which I suppose all men my age, when you whatever you do, is when you get into this retirement, how do you how do you manage your time really? 
And um, I've been building a house for the last couple of years, which has helped me enormously. Where I haven't done a lot, right? Where you're thinking I've been laying bricks, I haven't. <laughs> but uh, it's given me something to do over yeah. the last year or, or whatever. And uh, it's just managing your time. And and I want to really go back to work, Cass. Now, if that's helping a young manager, or you know, we hear this sporting director now. I would like to think if a chairman asked me a, a, a question now about football, I, I would like to be able to think I would answer it. Mm. So. Um, Maybe we'll try and some, see, what, see what happens. I mean, it's great to see so many young managers getting an opportunity, yeah. but do you think there's sometimes experience is overlooked? Well, sometimes, but I remember when I was young, how fortunate yeah. was I when I was young at 39, 40. I had three or four where I wasn't very, I wasn't very, I was young and daft and it wasn't until I bumped into a guy called John Benson, God rest his soul, who helped me at, uh, at Wigan um, with somebody with grey hair to say, Steve, don't worry about the tea and it's not too hot and all the rest of it that you worry about. Just worry about a Saturday and win on Saturday and keep yourself fresh for Saturday and make sure you're right on the Friday. And steered me in a direction which, if I'd have had that at the start, I don't think I would have had four clubs in two and a half years because I found it very, very difficult in management to start with until until John helped me along the way. Mm. Um, you two could have had something else in common apart from Gillingham. Uh, you, play, you played for the Republic, obviously. Yeah. Is it true that Jack once tried to get you to play for Republic as well? Oh, I'll never forget that phone call. I've, and I've <laughs> said it many times. You were lucky you got one. I never I got, got one. I oh, got a phone call from Jack and said, uh, I've been on a train and I've just heard that you yeah, uh, I've just heard from the guard who lives next door to your mother that your mother's Irish. <laughs> I says, Jack, yeah, my mum's Irish. And this was before USA 94, and I'm not going to put on the words with Jack. He said, well, how the hell have you not told me before now, like, <laughs> that your mother's Irish? I says, well, Jack, unfortunately, you know, I haven't been got round to it or whatever. He says, well, look, we've got real problems at centre-half before, this is before yeah. USA 94. Um I'd be delighted if you'd come along with us and, and play. And what do you think? I says, Jack, I'm I'm 34. He says, I know you're 34, but you're still going well. <laughs> he, say, he says, that doesn't matter to me. So um, I, 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 I listened to it and said, Jack, I'd love to do it. Why not? Playing a World Cup, why not? But next day I got in and Sir Alex has got wind of it and called me to the office and said, listen, if you're going to join the Irish, then you're going to be classed as foreign. And the, that daft rule at the time and the assimilated players and foreign players would mean that you can't play in Europe for us, so you're not doing it. You get me drift. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got the drift. And, uh, and, and unfortunately, it didn't happen. But I, I took Alex, my son. I went to USA in 94. And yeah. we went and we went and seen the first game in New York. And then we went down to Florida to watch, play Mexico in the boiling heat. And, and since then, I've always watched the Irish team and looked out for it because... As I said, me trying to get the Ireland job again, and yeah, I'm trying to get the <laughs> Ireland job. Come on, yeah. now you so, don't know the guy. Still, so much reaction. Please um, tell Steve that the two goals against Sheffield Wednesday were one of the best days of my life as a United fan. It comes from Steve. Remember that? I remember watching that. Do live. you know it's thirty year ago? It's oh, like wow. Um, wow. You know, it's um, yeah. I mean, look, them are the, the, the special moments, um, and. And a lot of people don't realise Chris Woods was actually staying with us and we're going out for dinner that night. <laughs> and I'm sure the first one, I'm sure the first one, he's just looked at it and thought, I think I'll let that one in. But <laughs> Woods, you wouldn't say that. But um, yeah, one of the yeah one of the great days when you yeah. look back on. Yeah, uh, Jamie, who's a Gillingham fan, says, ask Steve what his thoughts are on his ex assistant Stephen Clemens, who's at Gillingham. Yeah. Now. Well, I mean, I wish him the best of luck, Clem. I, I, he's worked for me for the, uh, the best part of 10, 12 years. He deserves his chance. He's got a real good opportunity at Gillingham. Um, I wish him well. I speak to him. I speak to mm. him all the time on it. I'll always be indebted to Gillingham, and I'm sure Cass will too. That it gave us the opportunity to play, and certainly when everybody was turning me down when I was a kid, Gillingham took me on and stayed there seven years. So one of the first results I look for when you talk, ask me before is always how's Gillingham yeah. doing. Yeah. Keep an eye on them. See how they're doing and. Uh, I wish Clem the best of luck because uh, he deserves a crack. Yeah, yeah, uh, and it, it, it's not necessarily something that qualifies you to be a great manager, but he's such a lovely lad. He is such he's a, a lovely really, lad. He's such a really you you'd want him to do well, wouldn't yeah. you? Because he's such a great lad. And yeah. if you're a great lad, Jeff and Steve will probably you know echo this is that you know if you can communicate well, 
It's yeah. a bit of a battle with players. You've got to be able to do that really well to have some mm. sort of atmosphere the big, within the group. It's standards. The, it's the big. It's the biggest part, I think, now, Cass, of the whole thing, mm. is is that man management side has become more and more difficult because of the individuals that you're dealing with. Even at that level, communication is key to it. How you get on with them, how you manage the group, is is mm. arguably the hardest part of management. Talk Sport Breakfast, waking you up Monday to Friday morning from 6 a.m. on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.